One of them is a back and forth between you and a staffer about a secure fax that won't come through, and you directed him to, quote, turn into non-paper with no identifying heading and send non-secure. Aren't you ordering him to violate the laws on handling classified material there? No, not at all. And as the State Department uh, said uh, just this week, that did not happen, and it never would have happened. Uh, because uh, that's just not the way I treated classified information. Uh, headings are not uh, classification uh, notices. All right, uh, so there you go. Joining us now is Mary Madeline, Republican political consultant, former advisor to Vice President Dick Cheney, former campaign director for President George W. Bush. Hello, Mary. Hello. Happy New Year and Happy New Year to everybody. And I see we're starting the new year as we ended it or as we've lived the last 20 years or however long it's been. Can I just say having worked for Dick Cheney and having been read in at the highest level, that is a treasonous breach right there. You cannot. But having said all that, no one cares. I mean, they, uh, the only people that care are conservatives who aren't going to vote for Hillary anyways. And her people don't care about that. What they are going to care about is when she loses Iowa and New Hampshire. Well, I want to get to all that. But, but you, you believe that this, what has been talked about and described by many, including um, uh, Dick Morris and others, as a smoking gun. You believe that this is a treasonous breach, which, what was just described there on Face the Nation? I think the co certainly the combination of all of this, and the FBI, I think, thinks the same I don't have any inside sources, but they, I do know that there's a schism over there in the, in the criminal division and that what is being perceived by people who know the law and know what the security uh, rules are, that, that she has broken the rules. And it's even more egregious because she's it's the Secretary of State. I mean, there's no, if you can't trust her to protect our security, then who can you trust? It's it's really sad. However, I do not think it's a smoking gun in the political sense. I, I think losing Iowa and New Hampshire is going to be the, the pivotal moment to, to see the prowess of her campaign and the depth of her support amongst Democratic regulars. Okay, she is in trouble. New polls today, NBC News and others in, in Iowa and New Hampshire, as you alluded to. Why? Because, as I said recently, she, she, she just doesn't have any, she doesn't have the depth of a following. Her, her following is derivative of her husband. There's no, she doesn't have that big loyal faction in the Republic, in the Democratic Party. She may have some loyal followers and some feminists and such, but she just, she's just there because she's there, because she's the wife of. I don't know what else, of, what of, of her record can she point to other than having been in public service you know, those many years but what has she actually accomplished by all accounts she's done her, her record has been abysmal as is evidenced by the one little thing it's a big thing for those of us whose heart, hearts are still broken it's the Benghazi movie that's coming out this week so right. I just don't think she has a depth of support necessary for going for the long haul if she did she Obama wouldn't have snuck up on her and I'm not saying it's Bernie I'm saying when she loses those two states, that's, those are the kinds of events that make others, however the rules are, rules are made to be broken, jump in the race. I don't right. know if it's Elizabeth Warren or if it's Joe Biden or if it's Jim Webb's going to run independent candidates. So you, 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 you don't think that they'll coalesce behind Sanders? You think they'll say, uh-oh, and, and a Biden or a Kerry or a, or a Warren will get in? Yes. Huh. Okay, I, I want to go to the, I want to go to the Republican side. Uh, new NBC poll out also shows Trump now is close to within the margin of error in Iowa, um, and of course he has a huge lead in uh, over Cruz and others in New Hampshire. Um, is he going to uh, pull out to Iowa and, and and take New Hampshire and go along his merry way? I, this ain't over. I, I'm not, as you know, I'm unaffiliated. I I know. I look at the ground games. I look at. The, the philosophic, the philosophy and the policies of the candidates who are in the top tier now, Cruz is the best candidate for conservatives. And I, having worked in Iowa, about five or six different caucuses, it, translating those votes, that popularity, those poll numbers into caucus votes, not, it's not you go, show up and 
cast a vote and leave. You've got to stay there all night on a blustery, cold night, and you've got to convince other people to vote for you. He might, Trump might have that. I know that Cruz does have that, and we'll just see what happens. In New Hampshire, I think it is going to be a free-for-all, and then we get to South Carolina, where I think, I don't think, I know Cruz has a, a spectacular ground game, and right. I know he has a good ground game throughout the SEC state, so I don't think this thing's going to be over, and I, I think Jeb's going to do pretty well in New Hampshire, too, so let's just, I wouldn't call it today. All right. Mary, sorry about your Saints. Have a happy New Year, and we'll speak to you soon. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Mary Madeline, ladies and gentlemen. More of the show coming up next. Don't go away.